if you look at the Oxford dictionary it defines tolerance as the ability of an individual or the willingness of the individual to tolerate the existence of opinion or behavior that either one dislikes or one disagrees with. Okay. So, very apt uh, description of tolerance that uh, it is your ability or it is your uh, uh, willingness uh, to live with certain types of uh, ideas, opinions, behavior uh, that you do not approve of. Okay. Now, if you look at our uh, usual life experiences, okay, there are four uh, no broader uh, boundaries that defines our uh, goals, the fulfillment of uh, those goals. The very first thing that uh, life does necessitates uh, understanding of specific goals. Okay. So, there is a need put forth uh, in front of you that you have to identify the goals that you want to achieve and you should find meaning in uh, those goals. Number two, irrespective of however capable you are, okay, you would certainly have certain limitations. Either those limitations are uh, no confined to yourself or there could be certain limitations that has to do with the environment. But then you have to realize that there are certain limitations, either limitations in terms of your own capabilities, your own potential, your own time management, your own stress management or a certain type of limitations that environment puts in front of you and you are not given the freedom that you would have actually loved to have. Three, there could be a possibility of renunciation of certain goals okay, and there could also be a possibility of conceding certain limitations. No? So, identification of goals, you know, the propulsion in terms of your uh, behavior means those uh, behavioral issues that can still uh, know, propel you towards achieving those goals. Once you start moving towards the goal, certain types of limitations that you realize okay. and then you try your best to achieve the goal. You also try to uh, know, refine the whole process of achieving the goal with uh, know, accepting certain limitations. Now, this would involve certain degree of tolerance. The fact that you have a goal that you would certainly like to achieve but you have to wait and watch. Okay. Uh, one of the most contemporary example could be that while you take admission, you want to graduate, okay. but you know that there is a limitation that the environment has put in front of you and that is the four, four years limitation. No? That you have to undergo uh, the semester structure that IIT puts in front of you and you have to pass on each semester you have to clear with certain uh, CPIs, okay, which ultimately will help you achieve the target that you have set for yourself. Okay. Now, there could be multiple uh, you know, experiences that you can have. You are all aware of the limitations, no? AP, warning, okay. uh, undesirable grades. Okay. When I say undesirable, I am not talking of F, it is C, D, the grades that uh, are given, but you do not uh, usually love to have them or finally, getting F. You are told that you will uh, know have to go for extra load. When you are told that you have you will if you want to graduate on time, you will have to clear this in your uh, summer course. Okay. Now, these are environmental limitations which fuses with your own interaction with the environment. You did not perform well, uh, you missed certain things. And therefore, it is the limitation that uh, the environmental structure puts in front of you and it is your own interaction with it that finally, helps you land up in a situation wherein uh, you have to devise other strategies if you want to graduate on time. Okay. Uh, similarly, once you graduate then you realize and perhaps I think by the end of the third year you would realize that graduating is not important. So, every time human beings have this ability of sliding the bar little ahead once you are very close to achieving it. Okay. Uh, let me ask you something very frankly. When you were in plus 2 and you were uh, know, uh, getting ready for your exams, J exams, okay, how many of you thought that you will finally crack the exam? Raise your hands. 
you see out of this pool no <coughs> five seven people were confident they will be able to crack the exam the rest were still not very sure what will happen if you are not sure you would certainly have thought of alternatives okay those of you who cleared the exam again this question is for them once you uh, know joined the iit structure and once you, you know lived couple of weeks in this structure did you think anything had changed before entering iit system and uh, uh, no after in entering iit system perhaps the answer would be no life was as it was you were the way you were nothing changed okay uh, similarly once you come uh, closer to the end of the fourth year overall if you know start from uh, any given point okay if you trace back to that point uh, of your autobiographical uh, uh, content of your memory to the present day you will find that there is a big change you know really many things have changed in you okay but if you just look at the intermediate points that you have crossed then you realize nothing much has changed i was uh, you know the same boy as i was in the third year if you compare third to the second year or say first semester to the second semester second to the third intermediate uh, you no know, positions you realize that usually the changes are very very smaller okay but such type of smooth changes doesn't put a big challenge in front of you but imagine a situation when uh, no suddenly things changes upside down okay study we took uh, the example of uh, one of the victims of a communal riot in india okay imagine a situation that uh, you are told that there was a communal riot in your area okay and say one of your uh, parents finally succumbed to the injuries during the communal riot life never remains the same for you suddenly one moment and it changes upside down your entire concept of tolerance for people tolerance for uh, certain aggressive acts tolerance for uh, say certain type of religious practices tolerance for certain type of uh, no group involvement uh, tolerance for certain type of uh, group activities political <coughs> activities you would realize that overnight there is a big change simply because the outcome that it has yielded to you okay that has led to a huge difference okay now uh, if you look at the process of adjustment that has to do with tolerance you realize gradually in your life initially that does not happen but gradually uh, it starts happening that you start accepting things okay that you realize that it cannot be changed and you also know that i cannot even ignore it okay uh, especially those who have uh, crossed the 30s no ask them okay how much uh, no they have started complying to the social protocols the do's and the don'ts of the community how much they have succumbed to uh, family pressure peer pressure and gradually with uh, you know more and more uh, you know uh, growing in the society you realize that gradually this acceptance also increases a lot in the uh, initial years especially till uh, adolescence also it's very difficult to accept you know that i cannot change this okay in most of the cases you feel that yes i can rest of the world couldn't but i can certainly change this okay but gradually this acceptance comes that uh, no there are certain things that you can neither ignore you cannot even refine them so the best strategy could be that simply accept them the way they are uh, two and that has to do with uh, this uh, no acceptance of the fact that you cannot change or cannot ignore these facts therefore acceptance becomes an inevitable component of the adjustment process no and the more and more you start accepting things the more and more tolerant you become okay now if you look at uh, the extreme possibilities with respect to tolerance one extreme uh, no end of tolerance dimension could be that you have an indiscriminate acceptance of your own self and others okay you do not uh, know uh, go for discriminating analyzing why this happened why that did not happen whether this is a tolerable behavior or not 
you become indiscriminate uh, in terms of accepting your own self and others. The other possibility is that you go to the extent of rejecting everybody okay, and you turn into the mode of denial. I okay. will uh, take a couple of examples. No? Indiscriminate acceptance would be that uh, say uh, you display certain type of behavior which usually people do not approve of, which people do not like, but then uh, you appreciate your own behavior, you give uh, no reasons for your own behavior and you do not find fault in your own self. Majority of us uh, no, do not find fault in ourselves in most of the cases, but in certain cases uh, no, the fact that you are at uh, on the wrong foot is very clearly uh, no, known to us and in such situations uh, most of us would be uh, no, uh, generous enough to accept that I did commit an error and I am extremely sorry for that. Uh, some of us are not brave to accept it right at the face of it, so there would be delayed acceptance. No? After two days, after one week you accept it, okay, I did that thing to you, I think I was wrong, okay. because it requires certain degree of uh, no, uh, bravery in you to immediately accept that I am extremely sorry. Uh, and say if the same act if you have to relook at and uh, know if you have to apologize for what you did after a passage of a longer time then we become much more compliant to it you know we accept that yes i think perhaps i was wrong now indiscriminate acceptance in um, think of different situations uh, indiscriminate acceptance of the self where you start accepting your failures although you should not have done that. Right now, we took the example that nobody sets a goal of achieving an F grade in the course. Nobody sets the you know, uh, uh, goal that I will score D in all the courses and become the minimum achiever uh, in the history of IITs. Nobody thinks of that. Such goals are not even, you know, nobody would even think of that. Even if I ask you to think this uh, you know, as a hypothetical example, you will have great degree of discomfort accepting this even as a hypothetical example. Okay. Now, you start uh, you know, thinking that to find you were the uh, topper of your uh, school, you were very bright academically when you went for the JE coaching, uh, you, know, uh, you, were, you always gave outstanding performance in the group to realize that right in the first semester. Okay, all instructors starts telling you that you are not performing well. Okay. Indiscriminate acceptance in that situation would be that you start questioning the fact that how come uh, no, my achievement is not being accepted by uh, the stakeholders. Okay. I have been a very bright student all through, okay, till the point I reach this point and suddenly you tell me that your performance is not uh, up to the mark, you get AP warning, okay, we have certain structural uh, no, uh, tax that are put depending on whatever you have scored. Now, these are if you go for indiscriminate acceptance, you start gradually accepting okay, the grades that you were given and you do not try to you know, fight against it, fight against means I will uh, know or next time I will prepare so well that I cannot get anything less than A, if not A plus or B. Okay. So, that is indiscriminate acceptance. Okay. Usually, uh, if you become uh, know, tolerant to certain aspects in life, it starts stunting your possibility of growth. I will come to those examples. Right now, I am at a micro example, then we will gradually move to macro examples. So, similarly indiscriminate acceptance of others would be that you accept the person with all types of misdeeds that he uh, or she performs. Okay. Usually, we always go for certain classificatory scheme. Okay. We are all choosy. Okay. Started when we were talking about selective awareness, okay. there also we uh, uh, no, discuss this issue that by default human beings are wired in a particular way and therefore, we always uh, know become uh, know, uh, choosy in terms of whom to pick and accept and whom to pick and reject. 
Now, if you go for indiscriminate acceptance, then you do have to pay a heavy price for it. Okay. Usually, people who go for indiscriminate acceptance of the self, they would be very happy with the minimal achievement that they have uh, got in their life. Okay. Consequently, you also start you know, uh, you know, uh, talking about others and trying to you know, reject whatever you know, superiority uh, component has been attached to certain types of achievement by the society. Indiscriminate uh, acceptance of others would also mean that uh, you accept others the way they are, okay. although uh, larger uh, part of the community does not approve of behavior like that. Extreme rejection and denial on the other hand would mean that you simply reject uh, know whatever uh, comes your way, you tend to deny things. Okay. So, the same example if you turn it, uh, know, turn it twist it a bit, you are told that fine uh, this is your grade sheet and you realize that uh, two courses D, two courses C, one course F okay. and you say that uh, this cannot be my grade sheet. No? I know how softwares commit errors and hence I need to clarify from the DOA office, I need to clarify from instructors. Okay. I simply reject that this cannot be true. Okay. Uh, coming forward with a very interesting example, I know somebody who has been into smoking for long, long time. Okay. Uh, he is now pretty uh, grown up. Uh, his mother for last uh, several years, more than a decade, she has been living with uh, uh, her son. And uh, one day, uh, the son was uh, discussing this, we were talking about something and he said that, do not you think my mother knows I smoke, but if you ask her, she will blindly refuse. No, she will say, no, no, my son cannot do these things. Okay, although she has been watching this for last, you know, so many years. This is you know the extreme of rejection and denial. Okay. That you become so tolerant to somebody uh, you know you are in love with, okay, that you simply you know deny certain things, uh, you certain certain uh, you know you start rejecting certain things. The mother in love with the child simply says, My son cannot smoke. Smoking is very bad. I know many students who smoke, I know many people uh, you know in their grown up age also they smoke, but my son cannot do so. Okay. Why uh, no tolerance becomes extremely important in terms of adjustment? One, because you are not providing opportunity to your own self to grow, because you are, have started indiscriminately accepting all your underachievements. Two, you would have extreme difficulty okay, uh, interacting with others, maintaining that harmony in your uh, immediate environment because you have developed this tendency of rejecting everything in the environment or denying everything in the environment. Okay. You cannot live in the mode of rejection and denial. You have to remain in contact with the hardcore reality okay, that there are certain things which are accepted by the society, there are certain things uh, that you cannot change in the society, there are certain things that it is better to ignore rather than trying to change them. Okay. And within all these limitations, you search for your own opportunities of growth. So, that although this could not be changed in uh, last say 65 years of the history of this country, can I try a bit? Okay, this would be uh, know, now moving more and more towards the median point on this continuum. Let us take a macro example. <coughs> Uh, we have a very uh, rigidly defined boundaries of uh, caste, class, community, uh, religion, different types of uh, beliefs and practices. There are very defined lines and that has existed for I do not know uh, how long. Okay. You start tracing back in the history to realize that this was existing even in that time, this existed even in the other time, other time. Now, if you simply go for an indiscriminate acceptance in the situation that I am narrating now, I am uh, born in a family 
which has been classified by the community as uh, one of the community at the lower strata of the society. There are several castes, no? based on the caste line. Okay, the society says that these castes, no, it is better to reject them in terms of opportunity for full blown development and growth. If you are born in that community, and then you decide that why should I accept uh, you know, uh, the fact that because I am born in a particular uh, caste and hence I should accept the way society wants me to uh, behave, I uh, simply refuse to do that. Okay. Or you simply uh, you know, uh, become extremely revengeful and you say that why should I tolerate things the way it has happened to me. Okay. It can uh, you know, the extreme of this would be that uh, you completely you know uh, become very timid, you accept that because I am born in this uh, group, hence my job is to uh, you know uh, uh, mend shoes for example, you know, if I am born in the family of a cobbler. As a traditional uh, family business, I do not go to school, I simply write from my childhood days, I start learning uh, how to mend shoes and I keep on practicing that. Okay do not allowing myself the opportunity for uh, full scale growth, the way other people in other community are growing. This could be indiscriminate acceptance. Extreme rejection and denial could be, I do not believe in these things. Okay, I simply refuse that a cobbler is supposed to mend shoes. I simply refuse uh, the fact that uh, you know, a child born in the family of a cobbler needs to do this. And gradually you think know that both of both of them can backfire. No? So, what there could be intelligent uh, ways of handling such type of situations. Okay. And you would find thousands and thousands of examples in our contemporary society, people who really faced it, these are not uh, hypothetical examples, no? thousands of people uh, know, have faced it and they have found out ways of overcoming them and they have proven their ability. Okay. Gone to the extent of saying that fine. I uh, do not read the, I do not need the recognition and the tag of a particular caste, class, community, sect, religion, nothing. <coughs> I am above all these things. Okay. So, uh, now the moment you start succumbing to this type of uh, know, uh, uh, indiscriminate acceptance, the tendency within you, okay. and if you show extreme of tolerance, you are going to pay a heavy price for it, because you are not going to search for opportunity that will allow you to grow. And similarly, if you develop this tendency of just rejecting anything that comes your way, that also backfires, because then you will never get the opportunity of gelling well with the rest of the community. You will always remain an outlier. So, uh, these are interesting uh, dimensions uh, in terms of uh, striking uh, balance, striking uh, you know, seeking adjustment and retaining that equilibrium. That I neither go for complete acceptance, nor do I go for complete rejection. But having said this, uh, you must also realize know, that there are certain situations, where uh, the need could be that you outwardly reject it. Okay. Uh, take for example, you are told that uh, know, there are uh, uh, highest number of uh, know, crime against women in such selected states in this country. Or Overall, the national figure shows that um, gradually over years, the rate of crime against women has increased. Uh, the number of uh, missing children have also increased. Okay. Now, there are these are certain facts, and if you say that I reject this type of uh, you know, uh, compliance in the society, I would go for zero tolerance that any crime of irrespective of whatever is the magnitude of the crime, any crime against children, any uh, crime against women, any crime against uh, elderly people, I just reject it. If you reject you know, stuffs like this, it is perfectly okay. okay. But the extreme of it, think of the recent debate that is taking place in this country, you know, after this uh, Delhi episode. People are now uh, you know, advocating a group advocating that fine, uh, you know, if you are involved in uh, sexual crimes against women, then the penalty should be that you are given life sentence. 
option 1. Option 2, people say that fine uh, you should be you know, not made to die immediately, but you should be not given the opportunity ever in your life of coming out of the prison. Means, prisoners also have certain opportunity you know, say like going on parole, means going out of the jail or if you behave uh, nicely, uh, your uh, total duration of stay in the prison gets reduced. Okay. One view point is that do not allow any such opportunity, this person lives in the prison in an isolated uh, situation and is forced to live that way throughout his life. So, that he is made to realize that how heavy uh, was the penalty that he had to pay, because uh, that sentence could lead to momentary pain and it is all over. Another option nowadays you no know, talked about is chemical castration. Okay, for the first time I am hearing it in the uh, in the news is nowadays you no know, that there are uh, group in our society which is advocating about it. There are many, 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 many such debates. You could think of uh, rejection, but then if you take extreme views, okay, then it might also uh, lead to certain types of consequences which the society might have to address in the coming days. Okay. Uh, let me again come back to your example. No? Say somebody uh, getting an AP, that is your academic probation or getting a warning is given an opportunity that next year, if you perform well, this tag will be removed. Okay. And there is a system at place, okay, which will keep monitoring your grades across courses okay, and will uh, you know, keep suggesting you that say you are underperforming in this course and if this continues next semester you might be out. Okay. We have a committee, you know, academic performance evaluation committee, uh, which will look at the cases of all APs and warnings. You know, so, that if there is a continuity in your history of uh, getting such uh, tax, then the committee recommends that uh, these people should be asked to quit the program. Now, extreme uh, rejection condition would be that you underperform and you are asked to leave. Okay. The harshest form of it could be the movie fashion, usually that will never happen. Okay. Uh, if you make it more and more melodramatic, you are given the grade sheet and you are told that a taxi is waiting for you out. Okay. But usually what happens, system provides you a buffer zone, okay. giving AP and warning tax are buffers that you are, you have been identified as a weak student who is underperforming in certain courses and you are given this opportunity within one semester, next semester, okay, try to uh, strike a balance. So, taking extreme uh, views could uh, know, be extremely detrimental for maintaining the harmony in the society. Similarly, if you simply uh, know, if the system starts uh, know, making indiscriminate acceptance, okay, then it becomes very difficult, okay, because then the system will not demand anything from you. So, even though you are, uh, you have got F all uh, through in your uh, four years of a stay, you are told you have been very consistent in your academic performance and hence the president medal goes to you. Okay, because your performance has been consistent uniformly F in all the courses. Okay. That would be uh, know the consequence if you go for indiscriminate acceptance no? at, a my, at a macro level. And therefore, there is always a beauty that you do not go to these two extremes, rather you try to converge you know, uh, at a point where there would be a still a difference. You know? For certain things you will have little more tolerance, for certain things you might not have tolerance at all. Uh, I will not do that exercise here, but recollect your own experiences. Somebody uh, know, uh, talking something negative about you, because you belong to certain caste, because you belong to certain community, because you uh, know, uh, believe in certain type of uh, religious practices, it annoys you. Okay. You have very little tolerance for it. Okay. Uh, but if you are uh, know, told something else, which does not touch on these sensitive issues, then you might show a little more tolerance towards it. Okay. 
uh, there are many many you know real life examples where you would realize you know uh, that uh, people who were uh, tolerant in certain cases uh, in uh, situations where people did not show tolerance at all okay and they went for it for that type of a phenomena okay uh, i'm sure you must be aware of this episode uh, the bandit of the yesterday years no fulan devi okay uh, at one point uh, in her life uh, no she underwent massive trauma she was uh, no uh, dragged to a village uh, she experienced gang rape in that village she was forced to you know move to a uh, well there and fetch water uh, without uh, clothes she was completely undressed a great degree of humiliation she experienced at that time and uh, little later okay she did come with her own group with the fire weapons she uh, no made i don't remember the exact number perhaps it was 12 or 16 people stand in a row and she shot dead each one of them okay this was this became a big news in those days it was called vehmai episode vehmai was the name of the village where this episode had taken place uh, she surrendered and then many many things happened she later on became a member of the parliament Uh, from one of the constituencies in up a book was written on her uh, life later on a movie was uh, made based on that very book okay i am not saying that what happened was right or wrong i am not saying what happened is a true or a fabricated story nothing like that all i am saying is that certain uh, experience of a woman and she tries to go up to a full blown revenge okay that you identify people make them stand in queues okay and you shoot them all okay uh, there are episodes uh, no very recently a brave girl from hyderabad had come to limelight after this uh, uh, new delhi uh, gang rape episode uh she came on the national television and said that uh, i am i run an ngo in uh, hyderabad for women who are under distress women who have experienced sexual assaults and she said that i was myself gang raped uh, you know by eight people and the case is still pending and i am fighting for not only my cause but i am fighting for the cause of the rest of the women who suffer my way okay the reason i am taking this uh, example is that you see one victim who decides to shoot others the other victim who decides not to kill others fight a legal battle establishes an ngo of her own okay and says all those who suffer like me come to my ngo and i'll fight for you okay there is a big difference no one showing complete intolerance one showing great great degree of tolerance okay so this is what uh, happens in the case of uh, real life events when you have to accept or when you have to reject certain things we now come to uh, the third dimension of uh, subjective adjustment and that is autonomy now autonomy is defined as the capacity to act freely uh, without getting influenced by any other external source okay so there are multiple agents in the society which can influence you but then if you have this uh, no uh, capability within you Uh, to reject the influence or to surpass the influence that are imposed on you by the social agents and work freely this is your uh, no capability of uh, being autonomous what is very interesting with human beings is that right from our childhood days we do exhibit the tendency of enjoying autonomy to certain degree take a newly born baby i don't know if you uh, you have that experience or little grown up babies which i am sure you must have experience of babies like that hold their hand firmly to the level that you do not allow free movement and you would realize that the baby starts you know uh, throwing tantrums baby wants to be free and this shows this is a good indicator that even the smallest of the human child okay 
does not want to be captivated, no? you want to enjoy autonomy. That I want, uh, no, the moment the child starts showing the tantrum is an indicator that I want to have no complete freedom of manipulating my body parts the way I want. You please do not stop me doing that. And perhaps my guess is that this was the reason why we have finally come forward with a evolving mechanism where somebody who is uh, considered to be responsible for committing certain uh, no illegal act, okay, he is handcuffed. Okay, that something that is native in you, I do not allow you to express it. So, handcuff, no? when these police people will come and uh, handcuff you, is basically the denial of uh, no, that autonomy or confining somebody to a police station or confining somebody to a jail simply means that you are not allowed the no, uh, freedom that rest of the people enjoy in this uh, community to uh, move freely the way they want. Now, there are several scenarios where social agents become very important and they play decisive role in terms of guiding our course of action. Now, right now, in case of tolerance also we were talking about this fact uh, that there are certain social agents, there are certain uh, social uh, conditions that you experience in your life, where you find that there is a minimal possibility of modifying it or ignoring it and therefore, you accept it okay, and then search for possibility of modifying as an insider. Similarly, even in the case of autonomy, you realize that there are some heavyweights, those social agents which are very heavyweight, they will exert influence on you to the maximum possible extent and then either you succumb to their pressure or you enjoy the freedom that you uh, have always craved for. Now, the basic and the defensible criteria of adjustment is that stability of a larger system is the final goal of the society. Remember what we are doing now, right now is that we are comparing the pressure that is exerted on an individual. I am not trying to uh, know, uh, uh, justify it, but trying to say that at a larger level also, at a macro level also there is a need okay, to maintain uh, know, stability in the society. So, if you start uh, know, providing autonomy to everybody to all possible extent, then uh, maintaining harmony, maintaining stability within the society becomes very difficult. Therefore, you have to look at uh, know, the achievement of an individual, welfare of an individual and at the same time you have to also to look at the stability that the society has to achieve. So, that the relationship between the individual's welfare and the social welfare, the welfare of the entire social structure, okay, there is a harmony between them, there is a compatibility between them. Okay. The moment you have uh, no individuals uh, willing to enjoy their autonomy to the maximum possible extent, you will realize that achieving stability becomes difficult, because most of the individuals will start making random movements. Okay. Uh, society would want that there should be a symmetry, you enjoy autonomy, but there should be a symmetry and that symmetry if you uh, help the society maintain, then the society is at peace. The reason why society wants such type of thing is that uh, if you want to grow as a culture, okay, if you want to promote certain types of uh, no, uh, structures which has larger uh, meaning and larger influence of you on human life, then you need peace and tranquility in the society. Uh, let me take an example, I am deviating now a bit and then I will come back to uh, this. Uh, take. Uh, certain types of creative outcomes given by uh, people in certain societies, in certain countries. Uh, paintings for example, art and craft for example, uh, music for example, uh, literature for example. Okay. You would realize that the best of these things have come okay, when there was a peace, harmony and tranquility in the society. If you put a country, a region, on war, you would realize that these things will start sliding down. So, you do not have those many additions in uh, uh, literature, painting, art, craft, it is very difficult. Okay. You can take many countries, you take Vietnam for example, uh, pre-war, during war, 
and after war period. Take Korea for example, take Middle East for example, take our own country for example. You can, you can very easily you know plot it uh, you know on the um, uh, time scale and see that you know uh, if you make the time series analysis you will realize you know that you need certain degree of stability in the society. Uh, so, that certain things grows. Okay. Even philosoph uh, philosophical uh, discourses have uh, you know, uh, grown up and has achieved a stable form only when society was in a very, very stable shape, a very peaceful shape. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, how to fit uh, individuals uh, striving for welfare with the systemic requirement of maintaining stability is a challenge. Conformity to the way of the majority can be uh, know, accepted by some as one way of adjustment. Know. Majority says this, therefore, I will also simply accept it. Okay. This also uh, is a tendency of conflict aversion. Okay. You as an individual uh, shows a tendency that fine, I am aversive to conflicts, I do not want conflict. Although I disagree with the viewpoint that is being put forth. But because many of you say that or most of you say that, therefore, I do not want to remain in isolate, I do not want to uh, engage in conflict. But when you do that, the basic assumption that you are accepting is that majority's view is always right. Okay. Uh, however, if you look at human history, look at uh, scientific investigations, look at discoveries, uh, look at uh, philosophical discourses, new streams in philosophical thought, okay. uh, modifications in religion, you would realize that these were the people who did it, were the people who did not assume that majority is correct. Okay. Take any example, take any example, okay. irrespective of the discipline boundaries of different, different uh, know, knowledge domains, you would realize that those who came forward with the benchmark thoughts, benchmark discoveries were those who did not accept the traditional view. Allow me to deviate, uh, this is this has nothing to do with the psychology of adjustment, but if you read a uh, uh, text on creativity, there you will find uh, know very interesting uh, uh, research reports suggesting uh, the chronological age of the person who comes forward with path breaking uh, research in different areas, literature, philosophy, maths, uh, know, physics okay. and uh, based on uh, know, people who have really come forward with the benchmark thoughts and discoveries. Okay. Uh, there is a very interesting uh, discourse in uh, creativity, uh, which says that you need to be, uh, know, uh, you need to have very little burden of the social agents if you want to excel in certain areas. Okay. And if you want to excel in some other areas, you need to be deeply influenced by the social agents. Okay. Uh, but that I leave to you, uh, if you are interested, read uh, no such literature on creativity in psychology, you will find beautiful things there, beautiful description there. Okay. How the influence of uh, no different social agents influences your uh, no ability to go beyond the box and think something that, that your society has not yet thought of. So, one way could be that simply you accept uh, that find uh, this is the majority's view and therefore, I accept it as an individual. Okay. Or you say that fine, I want to deviate from the majority's viewpoint. Uh, take the example, uh, study there was a news that uh, the Supreme Court of India is uh, Know, carrying forward a hearing, uh, where the representatives of the Khap Panchayats were also invited uh, to share their viewpoint, okay. because they have been uh, projected as if they are hardliners. Okay. And at times, uh, their uh, uh, know, judgments go against the usual democratic uh, rights that the, the citizens of this country enjoy. Okay. Now, you have your community which tells you that marriage in the same gotra is not allowed. You have the law of the land which says that fine, you can marry somebody, even, even though he or she belongs to your own gotra. 
Now, whom do I follow? My immediate uh, uh, know, panchayat uh, viewpoint or the legal viewpoint that has been accepted by this country. Okay. So, um, no, you will realize that you will find a small subset of individuals who would always try to bypass this and you would have another uh, no, set of people who will simply blindly say that yes, this is true and this is the way of life. There was this heavy influence of um, uh, the Hindu way of life, uh, when uh, Buddha said that fine, I do not accept this type of a practice and he came forward with uh, modified practices. Okay. Of course, later on he himself was uh, know, uh, designated as a god, now he is being worshipped, but that was complete deviation from the majority's viewpoint in terms of religious practices. Okay. Uh, when uh, Certain uh, practitioners of religion uh, know, who are into healing tells you that these are non-scientific practices, know. go for modern medicine, go for uh, uh, know, pure microbiological analysis of your uh, bodily system. Okay. There is a clear departure from the majority's viewpoint. Okay. So, you would realize that uh, know, although certain degree of conformity is uh, no required for maintaining social stability, there is also a need in the same structure that people should deviate from the majority's viewpoint. This allows the community to grow, this allows the society to grow to get more and more refined. Now, wider range of social systems and culture and the variety of individual behavioral pattern requires that all of them they live in harmony. No? You remember again it is the basically saying that the cognitive, cognitive and the affective components within the individual and uh, no inter individual uh, conflict should always be minimized, so that there is always a greater degree of harmony. Okay. Now, you have uh, no a very wide range of social uh, system, wide range of uh, beliefs, wide range of individual uh, behavior, how to make them compatible is a major task. And this is what, if the if you are able to achieve it to the higher possible extent, you are adjusted. If you are not able to do that, your adjustment is at stake. Now, it is inconceivable that these systems are all equally good in terms of dimension of adjustment. No? So, all systems, all social practices, all uh, know, uh, beliefs, all thoughts, all behaviors are for the good of the individual and for the good of the society, this is not true. It cannot be accepted. No? Therefore, there is a, no, a, always a possibility that you simply do not accept okay, what the larger structure tells you, rather you look at it from your own viewpoint, you try to cross check, double check uh, no, if your viewpoint uh, needs any revision and then uh, no, see whether uh, no, you have to exercise autonomy or you have to accept the majority's viewpoint. Okay. So, if you uh, know, look at the extreme dimensions of autonomy, at one end you have a rigid social conformity, my society says this and therefore, I will blindly accept it. And the other extreme is, you are compulsive inner directed, no? you always look within you, this is what I want and that is it. Okay. Uh, look at uh, small children. I want a chocolate and that is it. They will throw all types of tantrums okay, without realizing where they are, where a chocolate is available or not. I want it, so I want it and nothing beyond it, no negotiations. That is compulsive inner direction. You are completely confined to your own self and whatever you think is correct, whatever you think you should be doing at this time, you do only that. That is compulsive inner direction and extreme of it is rigid social conformity. I simply accept whatever the society has suggested me to do. You remember we had taken the example of a, a marriage when we were talking about normality. We also took the example of uh, know, uh, prostitution being practiced in one village here in UP. Now, with respect to autonomy, if you look at marriage as an institution, you can define it as a social and legal identity where you also have uh, know the presence of these khap panchayats, we took this example. Okay. 
Now when you look at the social and the legal identity of the marriage, you say that it is sacred, it is based on loyalty in relationship okay. and it is because of this that legally and socially prostitution has been socially disallowed and it is legally forbidden in our society. Having said that, look at the erstwhile nomadic tribes, no? the Bedia tribes, the Nut tribe, the Sansi tribe, the Kanjar tribes. No? There are uh, no certain uh, erstwhile nomadic tribes in India, where prostitution was the family occupation. And this very village, Natpura village in Uttar Pradesh, okay, where you find that all young women work as prostitutes. The reason they say that, okay, this is how the tradition has evolved. Okay. So, without realizing that this practice violates your right as a human being, as a citizen of this country okay, and without even realizing that your tradition is exploiting you, you simply accept it. Okay. And this is extreme rigid conformity to your social structure. Okay. You no, not even question it, no? the whole uh, for years and years the women has been going into this practice. Okay. And therefore, it is always suggested that completely confining to social, con completely confining to social way of life, showing complete adherence to social structures or completely becoming inner directed, both are not considered to be good. Enjoy autonomy, it gives you the freedom of uh, growth, but then try to find a point of convergence. We will stop here, tomorrow we will carry forward.